Alright, welcome back, and I'm sure some of you remember we had started with an unboxing of our new benchtop meter, a uh, MS8040. And this meter, Um, is going to do quite a few things that I was looking forward to. It's got a data output on it, which is going to allow me options as far as logging. Um, and one of the key things that I'm going to end up logging is temperature. When we do mini PC reviews, it's one thing for me to say, okay, it ran cool, you know, in my stress test. Um, it's another to tape a thermal probe to the case and say, here's a graph of the temperatures while we ran our benchmarks. Um, and that's something that I would like to provide going forward. Uh, so I had picked up this MS8040. I did an unboxing and poked through some of the features and looked at a few things. Um, I am actually using it battery powered right now because I don't have it uh, set up for long-term recording and I've been poking and prodding at it trying to get my key feature, that serial data out to work and we can see that I have a serial cable hooked up to it and we'll just bring this back down here and we're going to cut over to um, this has been a process to say the least uh, so by default if you go to Mastech's website they give you all the lovely details on the meter and they do actually have you know a support section where you can download the software this software is positively ancient it was written for visual basic 6 it hasn't been updated since 2008 um, and because of that it just did not want to cooperate. Um, and that was also not the least of my issues. The other one being the USB to serial adapters that I have are also ancient. Um, they are prolific PL2303s. And when you plug one of those into a Windows 10 system, the first thing it tells you is that it's been discontinued and good luck with the drivers. Uh, li literally, the driver and device manager says PL2303 discontinued. Um, talk to the vendor. And it doesn't work. So that was also fun. Now, fortunately, I ended up finding two solutions to those things. And although they didn't cooperate on my primary Windows 10 laptop, um, I believe that I have some other software stuff in the background that I need to track down there. Uh, because they, they did work. I actually got the meter to connect and record once and then it stopped after I had rebooted the system. I don't know if I ran into a security problem or if you know my antivirus broke something, take your pick. So the first thing is fixing the PL2303s. Uh, I was able to find a solution courtesy of Rick's Tech, and he's got a video, and let's actually open the YouTube link, not the search page. Um, he's got a little video here, and I'll put a link to the description for anyone else who runs into that. If you did purchase a meter like this one, and you do have a USB to serial adapter you're fighting with, but the gist of it is... So if you've got one of these... Yeah, we don't actually want to play that. The gist of it is, if you follow this link and unzip it, you can install the USB to serial adapter. Fantastic. Problem solved. Now, even once I got that working, I was still getting OCX errors trying to launch a Visual Basic 6 application. I tried a bunch of different things because Visual Studio 6 you know doesn't doesn't want to install it's a relic I tried 
software for other mass tech meters. I tried software for meters that use the same chip in this. Um, most meters, you know, and, and mass techs, not unique in this, use common components. Um, you can find the same controller that's in this one and a couple of other uh, handheld meters, but although that function worked, or I should say functionally worked, attempting to use a di different meter software, pieces were missing. Um, I would get it to connect and then I couldn't log temperature because the meter that I was using software for didn't have a temperature probe built in, so it would spit out garbage. Well, that's actually what I wanted to log. So no shortcuts there. Um, ended, up, ended up finding this danrust.net blog, installing Visual Basic and Visual Studio and Windows 10, which by the way, this also applies to Windows 7 and Windows 8. And fortunately for me, um, this was actually relatively straightforward. Clean up anything you've tried to do before, get your files ready. Go to vbcorner.net, not somewhere I expected to be in 2020. Um, had to go there, register for it, unzip the installer, and basically this installer that someone has written takes care of everything. Um, I'm not going to go through the process of actually running it because I've installed everything, but it pretty straightforward, set a directory for it to extract things to and then feed it your CD files. I pulled the CD files from archive.net and I used the professional edition. Um, the only problem I'll run into is I did want to install the service pack to make sure that you know I didn't just install a bunch of glaring security holes but the service pack that Microsoft is hosting is only for the Enterprise Edition and I installed Professional. So, good job Microsoft. Um, not that I really anticipated you to support Visual Basic particularly well in 2020 considering that the software is circa 1998. Um, but, here I am. So. With all of that out of the way and all of those problems solved, what we finally have is the multimeter software. And it's actually far simpler than it should be. You select your COM port, which in my case is COM6 for the USB adapter. We're going to turn the meter on and I'm going to go right to temperature. Turn on PC link on the meter. You tell Windows to connect to it, and right away it starts logging data points every single second. And importantly, it logs them with the unit. And what I found when I was poking through this, I remember my original video, I said it's going to only give me results in Celsius, which is fine because I can convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. However, what I found was that if I pressed this function button, it would in fact switch two degrees Fahrenheit. This is perfect, this is fantastic. I know it looks like it's just logging a bunch of 75s. So we're going to go ahead and pull out our probe and the adapter for it. And we're just going to plug this in. Which goes here. And if I put my finger on the end of the thermal probe, we can see it's starting to read my skin temperature. And this is effectively what we're going to do it we're going to do with it we're going to you know put it in something be it um, on the edge of a, a CPU heat sink and the CPU's heat spreader or um, on the outside of one of those mini PCs we've looked at a couple from Azul I think we've got one from Azul coming in soon that we'll be reviewing um, but 
that is uh, that is what we've been after. I've probably been fighting with this for about a week, and honestly, once I found the answer, you know, once the solution was, I need a Windows 7 system at least to get a base to prove that everything works. Um, I was off to the races. So, and we can see the temperature starting to drop now that I've let go of the probe. It'll probably stay at 81 for a little bit just because it is warm in my studio. Um, and that probe not going to release heat super fast without being placed in contact with something closer to the ambient temperature. All right, um, so that was it. I just wanted to go through the process of getting the MS-8040 working um, with a modern system. There are a couple of things I could have done differently. The Windows 7 laptop that I picked for this does have an honest-to-goodness COM port on it, and I did try to remove that as a variable. In fact, my Windows 10 system has a COM port on it, uh, or I should say my Windows 10 desktop does, and uh, that Removing this USB to serial adapter may solve all my problems as far as issues I was having with my laptop um, because the errors I were getting indicated it was having problems opening the serial board. So uh, I could have used an honest to goodness com cable. I don't have one. Um, I stopped and I grabbed some that I had at my day job and they ended up being <laughs> Um, female to female and I actually need a female to male cable to do this um, so that was something that I attempted but didn't quite have the option to do the way I wanted um, beyond that uh, I could you know get some different thermal probes or get a multi-point data logger the reason we didn't go with one of those was um, they're not cheap. So I, I picked up this meter. I think I mentioned in my unboxing I got it used for 50 bucks. It doesn't look like it's ever been used. Everything was new in package, but it was in a state sale. So that ended up working to my benefit. Um, with all of that out of the way, I do want to say thank you to our patrons. I know there haven't been many videos in the past couple of weeks. Um, I've been a little bit busy with some personal matters that have kept me away from my studio and took over my studio for a couple of days while I was building something. Um, I want to say thank you to Electrix for providing our opening and closing music. And I'm just going to leave with if anyone has any questions or comments, you know, if you want to know why I did something the way I did, or um, if you have questions about some of the ways we're going to use this meter or other things I can do with it that you'd like me to demonstrate, um, by all means, leave a question or comment below. I have reached out to a couple of other companies that make some newer meters we are going to have some more in-depth coverage on those in the next few months as well thank you for watching